The Flyers lose it in overtime on the road. Welcome to Post Game Live, presented by Curado Insurance. Ashlyn Sullivan, Al Morganti, back here in Philadelphia. And how the Flyers possibly even got to overtime is a miracle in itself. The shot differential, 46 to 11, and somehow the Flyers fight their way back. That game made no sense. None. At all. <laughs> uh, when you get outshot like that and the goaltender plays so good, stands from, to, to keep you in the game and then you come back so you get some physicality. So you hang up on the hang on, on the basics of your physicality and then you basically give it away on the three on three overtime. Yes, the Flyers now one in twelve in overtime on the season. That leads us to our Colonial Nissan game changer, which is the overtime goal for Ottawa. And this is just so disappointing for Felix Sandstrom, who played so well. Like you said, I'll to just give it away. This is just a dead giveaway. Uh, to bring it right there, he just sends a backhand pass over, and it's a wide open net, basically. I mean, there's panic to try to get to the front. But as you said, he played a terrific game and just doesn't is not aware of what's going on behind him. Sandheim tries to scramble over to get it, but there's no saving this here. This is just a flat out. It's whatever pizza delivery service you have. It's right Dominoes. there. Yes, well, then it's a Domino's right it there. It looks simply like <laughs> he <laughs> just <laughs> did not see him. Absolutely. There's not a lot of analytics to it. He just did not <laughs> see him. He did not see him at all. Uh, so unfortunate. Well, let's look at how the Flyers at least got to overtime because that is a miracle in itself. Scoring three goals in the third period. You have York, you have Cates, you have Tippett, all guys that have been contributing of late. Yeah, and this is, uh, this is the best part of this game, the fact that you were outplayed totally, uh, you know, territorially, certainly on that shot clock, it's, you're getting cleaned up and that thing, but then you come back in the game because you've managed to, to kind of just have a will your way into it. York, who took a big hit earlier in the game, comes in, takes, that, takes the puck right to the net, comes in and just wires a shot, so terrific for him. Then that gets you back into this game. It's just a great, great shot here, right up over the glove. So that's a great comeback by the Flyers. It didn't, they didn't finish it. This here, when you see it, he just takes it, take a look, absolutely wires it over the glove perfectly. So there's that smile on her face, and we were wondering about that earlier in the game, that if, he was, that, if that was ever going to come back. And it all starts when it's 4-2. to two. Now you're on a power play, and that's Kate's puck. Uh, the, the shot goes off, I think, the back of his leg, back, back of his... Uh, Left, uh, left leg goes off and into the net, so you get that power play. So all you need is to get that traffic. Here's that shot by Risto that finds its way through in front of the net. So if you're screening the goaltender, you get the big smile on your face, of course, because it doesn't matter how it goes in, it went in, and you get there. <laughs> and this is the one, uh, this is a terrific, another effort here. And we saw Morgan Frost, I thought he played an out, outstanding game to be able to get it back across, and Talbot's like, oh no, what's gonna happen here now? So they really managed to make a game of this thing. There it is, the play right there to come across front of the net. And they've got coverage everywhere. In other words, going to the net. So we had several really, really good, strong individual performances despite the shot total that went totally against them to be able to stay in the game mentally and tip it, get that goal to, 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 get, them, to get to your overtime. And I'll tell you, for a game that was this lopsided, uh, the, physic the physicality kept them in it. I'm, not, I'm wondering what John Tortorella, he's sitting above tonight, wasn't behind the bench, what he was thinking during this whole thing, because it's a game that I'm sure he would have had lots of comments behind that bench tonight. I'm sure he has some opinions yes. on this game, but it just seems like this game tonight was just the, the moral of the Flyers' season, to have no shot in it offensively, but you fight your way back because that's been the will of the Flyers this season, to so then lose it in that disappointing fashion. I guess, can you take away a moral victory because they fought back? Well, you can take away the fact that you didn't surrender anything. And that sort of has been the, that the statement that this mm -hmm. team has tried to make as opposed to last season when the game just would have rolled out of control. Right. Um, this is a huge game for the Senators. So, I mean, they were, they were desperate at the end of this game. They had some injuries during this thing. So the Flyers, uh, just, they never got down on themselves. We saw them last year when things got like this was like just the white flag went up. Well, there was right. no white flag going up here despite the fact that they were just manhandled in terms of shots. Yes, impressive for the Flyers to fight back. And now let's go back over the border to Canada and hear from Tony D'Angelo. Tony, that first period, only a few shots in the hole. What were they doing to you guys get into your offensive game? We only had a few shots in the whole game. We had two, two, three, six, something like that. Something uh, terrible. So. Not good. They, they outplayed us whole game. The fact that we were able to get a point shows good resiliency. Just stay in it, not to, not to let it get out of hand after I got 4-1. That part was, that's a positive, but the rest of the game got dominated. So, not good. Why were you guys able to show that resiliency? 
No, we just have guys who are going to keep working no matter what. It gives guys credit for that. I think uh, we haven't had a problem with that at all. Guys just battling, just trying to find a way back in it. Fortunately, we did. We don't get the second point, but uh, we also didn't deserve the second point. So it is what it is. Did he say anything to you guys? Did you find that within yourselves? No, he, I mean, he did the same job. He did a good job. It was just it was a rough game. Nothing he could have done for us to, to play better. We were getting dominated. So, But uh, like I said, as players, we were able to stick in there. And it doesn't matter who's behind the bench. you gotta you got to keep playing hard and find a way. Fortunately, we felt like I said, we found a way to do what we did tonight. I don't think it would happen many times if you'd play that game over. But uh, it did tonight, so good to get a point. Is there something specific they were doing that kept you guys Finding game you've had we just weren't exiting the puck out of our zone. You see how many pucks just kept getting in, and then we get to the, you know, right around the blue line, boom, turnover again. And then we get, to, even if we got out of the blue line, turnover again, and it just comes back. And you got to remember they're playing desperate. They're trying to make the playoffs, so they might have played a little bit uh, more difficult of a style than we've played against in the last few games here. I guess knowing that they're going to come in desperate, and we just talked about it before the game. Um, do you still feel like they caught you guys off guard? No, you can't be caught off guard. I mean, it's, um, I don't know how many guys we've had that have gotten close to playing in the playoffs. When we're as close as they are, it's, uh, you know, every game, every single point shift matters for them. So they played hard. They played the right way, and they, uh, they kept us on our heels most of the game. But like I said, it's a resilient third period, so just try to take that positive. On um, another positive note, you guys got a power play goal tonight, so you've been Two. searching. Yeah, um, do you feel like last game, even though you didn't score, you scored right after? Was that something you guys were able to tell off? Yeah, our power play's been real good now for five, six games. Been uh, moving it around good. We're starting to get more pucks in the net. You see, getting some tip goals. Katie does a good job in front of the net there, and JVR on the one, the one I scored is his flash screen. So it's uh, it's another positive, just moving the puck around a little better there, and it's been a sore spot for us all year. So good to get a couple. What can you say about Played great. You know, no. Uh, he did nothing wrong. He was awesome. Stop breakaway, breakaway. This chance, that chance. He was really good. So sucks he has to get the loss. Great, thank, you. thank you, guys. The Flyers lose it in overtime in Ottawa. Much more to come here in post game live, presented by Curado Insurance. We're going to talk Claude Drew, and you're going to hear from Owen Tippett. Stay with us.